Sometimes they're very complicated to do, they're very difficult to do because we've got a lot to celebrate. That's not true today, though. Um, we did celebrate Are you amazing? Uh, I've been grateful to have a lot of wonderful grandparents. And uh, Grandma and Grandpa Burgess are a couple of them for sure. So when I think of Grandma, I think about this sort of duality of like strength and fragility all at the same time. Um, now, I didn't live up here near Grandma, and I was, I was privileged to always get the phone call when her computers would break, like my brothers. <laughs> but invariably, she couldn't get a printer to work, or she couldn't get a monitor to work, or a mouse, or something, and they would get a phone call, and she would act like she had no idea what she was doing, and they would fix the computer for her. Um, so there's a sort of this fragility. Yet the irony of it is she became an expert in painting um, the, you know, with, uh, with China and she had a 240 volt or 220 volt kiln in her, in her house that she used all by herself. And so she had this ability to clearly do what she wanted to do. She had the strength to do it. And, and then also this, this sort of vulnerability of, I, I'm not sure how to sometimes do things. Um, I think of um, Grandma Burgess always being the parent or the grandparent or the adult that any of us as children compared growing tall against. Right? <laughs> and um, so, of course, I know my brothers and I, we would do that, and I watched her great-grandchildren all do the same thing, like, oh, I'm, I'm as tall as Grandma Burgess now. And so, and every year, the, the standard got a little bit less and less, but nonetheless, it was always wonderful to see this sort of small-statured woman that arguably could be perceived as fragile, yet, she would stand in choir and sing. Uh, it's sort of like her, her shoulders back. And she would uh, bring out this beautiful uh, soprano, this strong vibrato, this clear tone that was strong. And it was as though she was uh, saying, I believe in these words of great depth and with great uh, awe and power. And there was a strength in that uh, she might not be uh, tall, but there was, there was a sense of mightiness behind that. 
know, she could hardly walk much in these last months, maybe the last year or so. Uh, but was it five, six weeks ago, we sat in the same room, and Uncle Dan, my uncle, our uncle, and her, uh, her son, her oldest son, and Dave, and my mom's oldest brother, um, we celebrated his life. And she sat in this front row, um, seemingly incredibly healthy as one could be at 95, and saying as though there was, uh, like, it, it was just, we're having a good time. And she knew, she knew those songs well. She, in a sense, literally gave birth to those songs, and she owned it. And she sat up here, and there was a sense of strength amongst fragility. It was this duality that was grand. She might have been perceived as this sweet church girl growing up, because that's what I understand her to have been. Um, and she was involved in the church as a young teenager, and it was a part of her life. And there was this, again, this sort of um, this um, fragility to her and this quaintness. Um, and yet she survived um, a very difficult childhood as an alcoholic parent. And uh, maybe you all did arguably abusive. And clearly, Grandma and Grandpa, who both dealt with that, uh, worked very hard to make sure that was not going to be part of your guys' uh, lives and nor our lives. Uh, and she even survived COVID, right? I mean, for months and months and months, stuck in a small room, and to see the strength that it took to make that happen. Uh, fragility and strength combined, it was, that was Grandma for us. So if I look at those two, if I take the, contact, the, the cocktail of, of those two worlds, that fragility and that strength, and what did it create? What did it generate? Um, I think it probably generated a lot of things that were grandma. It generated a lot of things that were grandpa as well. Uh, but maybe it generated this uh, extreme uh, generosity. Uh, I know my brother and I would go visit uh, grandma in the summers for a month. And there's not a lot to do in Jonesboro, Arkansas, I've never been there. <laughs> but it wasn't really that we were trying to do a lot of things. It was about being with Uncle Dave and Aunt Susan and um, Grandma and Grandpa and just having great food and eating like we, you know, it's had a great time being with them, playing games, staying up late. Um, and invariably, um, on any given Sunday, before we would go to church, before you go to Sunday school, then you go to church, you would visit um, a, a, a care facility. And we would go into that space and there'd be a dozen or so um, elderly people that would come around a table and Grandpa would, I guess, preach a message or share a Bible story or something, and, and Grandma would sing some songs, and this sense of caring for people, it was, it was a part of the DNA of, of Grandpa. Part of the DNA of Grandpa. And I think the, the vulnerability and the strength, it, like it led to this place of being incredibly generous. Uh, I remember while visiting her at Atria time with the family, uh, she wasn't in the room, couldn't find her. And uh, she'd be at the dining table, maybe eating you know, extra dessert or something, or she would be in a room with some of her lady friends talking with them, and, and, and she would always tell us that the people had had the needs going on in the space, and she cared deeply about people. Um, grandma and Grandpa were incredibly generous to us as a family, incredibly generous, I think. I remember with, uh, with naivete calling them my freshman year, I got a two week Christmas break, and I called up Grandma and, and Grandpa and said, listen guys, I've got two weeks off, um, why don't you fly me to Arkansas so I can be with you and, and you pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> and I look back and now I, mean, one, I hope my grandkids want to do that with us because I'll do the same thing, but this sort of, well, clearly grandma and grandpa want me to be with them. I mean, they're going to pay for it, right? <laughs> that was the aura that grandma and grandpa portrayed. And, and there was no sense of even a, a let's, let's wait, or of course. And she, I showed up and I said to them, I said, Listen, that's my Christmas gift. I don't want anything else. <laughs> and of course, around the Christmas tree were a bunch of other gifts. That day. Um, but that was how they operated. That was the way they saw reality. Um, and so, you know, Grandma, Grandpa would be proud. 22 years without him. Uh, you weren't alone. Uh, a lot of people took care of you. Mom, Dave. did it without him, and there was a strength in that. And uh, never ever thought of any being anybody else. It was always Grandpa only. So Grandma, we're going to miss you, uh, but thank you for your legacy. Our 
hope is that we can live up to that. And uh, we're grateful for the, the life you've lived and uh, looking forward to celebrating you the next few months. ago or six weeks ago my brother's service we uh, a reference to a song that uh, mom used to sing to us when we were kids because she wrote this little lullaby um, my little baby goes night night with his teddy bear That's, that was the that was the lyric um, but the, it's a beautiful little melody that she wrote and my brother ended up taking that song and uh, and putting new words to it. So, because uh, he didn't think uh, my little baby go night night would sell real well. <laughs> anyway, so this is that song in tribute to our mother and our, our grandma. And uh, I'll share it with you. <clears throat> Thanks so much for being here. Uh, 
uh, special thanks to the caregivers and the staff of Terrabella, Lake Norman, Assisted Living Community, Mooresville, and the hospice workers who worked and cared for our mom. We're forever grateful for you. Today we do celebrate the life of Millie Burgess, her impact, her impact on us, her, her influence on our lives, and really on the lives of so many others as well. Lily was a godly woman. She truly loved the Lord, and she leaves behind a, a lasting legacy. And it was especially tough for her in the last few months, but the Bible tells us that for the believer, and my mom was certainly a believer, she had put her trust in Jesus, she had committed her life to Jesus. And so for the believer, the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, that for the believer to, to live is Christ and to die is, is gain. For the believer, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I know that mom's with Jesus. And at peace and in the joyous presence of our Savior who had said to Martha at the death of her brother Lazarus, Jesus said, He who believeth in me, though he die, yet shall he live. So mom's more alive today than she's ever been. And I think of the, she's more alive today than she's ever been, and there's no more problems. In Revelation 21 and 22, it, it really gives a list. No more problems, no more anguish, no more sorrow, no more misery for mom, no more tears, no more crying, no more heartache, no more longing, no more pain, no more goodbye like today, only hellos. March 22nd, or May 22nd of 2021, was not the end for Millie Burgess. It was really only the beginning for mom. And she knows in fulfillment um, what she believed in faith. She knows in fulfillment today. Her faith, the old hymn talks about mom's faith has become sight to her. I know all is well with mom today and I celebrate, even though we're mourning today, um, I celebrate her life because I'm not mourning today, we're not mourning today, as people who don't have any hope, because we do have hope. My hope and my confidence is in the fact that as a child of God, at the end of Psalm 23, it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That heaven is indeed a real place, mentioned 550 times in the Bible. My hope and my confidence is in the fact that as a child of God, though I'm drained, whether it be emotionally, physically, mentally, or even spiritually, I can rely on the strength of an all-powerful God. My hope and my confidence in the fact that I, as, a, as a child of God, I may lose my mom. I may lose my brother. I may lose my dad, a grandmother, a family member, or a friend. But Jesus says, you never lose me. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And mom and dad instilled those things into us. They together gave us hope as a family. They shared with us the only hope that one has. They shared with us Jesus. They kept us in church, Dad, Dan, Dan and Diane and I. We were always there, particularly in our years at Riverside Baptist Church in Buffalo, New York. And for the most part, we wanted to be there, for the most part. I'm very grateful for that. So in a nutshell, Mom's life was and is Jesus. On the back of the 
folded there. It, 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 you can, it's, I'm not gonna, rep, I'll just reference it, but I, I won't read it, but you can read it on your own. But that's, that's my mom's heart. That's our mom's heart, um, was Jesus. And that was in her Bible. <clears throat> and that was her passion, was simply the Lord Jesus Christ. Our mom was truly one of a kind and a real treasure. To know Millie Burgess was to love her. And everybody who knew our mother loved her. And I really can't think of a single exception to that. That everybody knew mom loved her. She endeared herself to others. Classy, sweet, loving, <clears throat> gentle, kind, generous, caring, merciful, compassionate, hospitable, gracious, and she did indeed have a genuine concern for others, as Scott said. She serves as an encouraging role model to many, a mentor. Mom was, I've always thought this is so important, and maybe she, she instilled it in me. Mom was a great listener. And uh, I want to I unloaded on my mom so many times my issues, my woes, my frustrations. And mom, she listened. Uh, we used to talk for about an hour and a half on Sunday afternoons. Those conversations ended some time ago, but I did treasure them. But when I think back on them, they were often one-sided. Really kind of unfair to mom, but I guess I knew that she would give the gift of listening to what I had to say. And she cared. She invested in numerous young women, numerous young ladies, with a genuine concern for those who were in need. As Scott referenced, she was a small woman maybe 411 tops, tops, but she had a, a large heart. Beautiful on the inside and beautiful on the outside. Mom was a devoted wife. Our dad adored our mother. They were a team made in heaven. 52 years of stability in our family. And I was thinking back, and I may be wrong, but I don't believe I ever once heard them argue. They probably did, but I should have never heard it. Not only mom, um, she, was, she was a wonderful mother. Perhaps, as, as again Scott referenced, probably without the benefit of it, of it on her own, in her own upbringing, she and Dad kept our family really close. And Mom and Dad both loved the times we were together as a family. Those were precious times. And it seems to me that family closeness in our family was the norm. And uh, it's not the case for many families. Mom and Dad were really supportive of us, whatever the occasion. Whatever the occasion, Mom always supported us. In the good times, and there were some, and, there were, and in the bad times, and there were more of those. I think back just from my own personal experience, um, when I traveled and sang a little bit, I sang in some interesting groups, um, whether it was a show group or a country band or a gospel group or a contemporary Christian group or a rock group. Um, they were always there. Whenever we were close in town, they were always there. And whether they liked what I was doing or even agreed with our, what I was doing, they were still there. A mom really could sing herself. She, as Scott referenced, she had a beautiful soprano voice. 
She sang in a lot of church choirs, Mike. She sang in your choir. She loved it. She loved to sing. She had a beautiful voice. Back in the late 80s, I had her over to the house, and I had this little rinky-dink recording studio that I, I recorded her several songs with her singing, and I, I think, and we're gonna play one, and thanks, Sam, but we're gonna play one, and I think you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about in listening to Mom sing. Not only could mom sing, but she was, she was a gifted artist as well. She very meticulously created exquisite pieces of china painting. Mom was a wonderful cook and a great baker. I benefited from that more times than I could possibly count. And our family was blessed by it. Some of, our out, some of you outside our family were blessed by it as well. Perhaps you might have received tins of cookies at Christmas time. That's something she loved to do every year. Or maybe some other treats from the Millie Burgess Bakery. She could crochet and sew. And I hadn't heard it for a long time. 
it. Do any of you remember mom's laugh? Huh. It was like, when mom left, it was, it was, it was all in. Everyone knew it. Everyone knew it. <laughs> mom never snickered. I never heard mom snicker. She always laughed big, and she laughed a lot. I'd like to hear that. But I remember that wonderful laugh, and obviously some of you as well. Mom loved her coffee. Um, hotter the better, Mom. And she once decided, she once decided that coffee wasn't good for my dad. <laughs> she thought it was rather unhealthy. So she convinced him to quit coffee altogether. And if you know dad, of course, he did. He quit coffee altogether. And mom, she didn't quit. <laughs> she, drank, she drank more. Of course, she, she drank more. She certainly convinced my dad to quit. That was, that was my mom. <laughs> she drank his coffee. Yeah. I, I, uh, mom loved her Hershey Kisses as well. Um, I'll never look at a Hershey Kiss um, and not think of my mom. There were always a stash of Hershey Kisses somewhere hidden away in the house. You had to look for them sometimes, but uh, they were there. And again, as, as Scott referenced, I, I, I was really impressed, if that's the way to put it, proud maybe, if, if Dad would be mad if he heard me say that, but I was maybe proud of how Mom when dad passed away, she learned to do a lot of things that she'd never done before. Um, even like pumping her own gas. Dad always did that stuff. That may seem kind of small and insignificant, thank you. It may seem kind of small and insignificant to some of us, but dad always did those things. And I was really proud, forgive me dad, I was really proud of, uh, of her and how she adjusted to that. Whenever mom was around friends and family, new acquaintances, she always bragged about her kids. Um, Dan and his accomplishments in Christian music, me as a minister, Diane as a business, her business intelligence, her hospitality, and her many other talents. I just want to say to you how much our family thank you for being such a wonderful caregiver to mom. You're amazing. You kept the fifth commandment and you honored our mother and you did it so well and continue to. And she was really appreciative of it. And I love the fact that she told you. I know others in our family also played an important role in meeting the needs of Grandma Burgess. And I just want to say thank you. Die. Mom loved us. We're blessed. Scott, Taryn, now is Naomi, Brian and Gina. And Adam David, Grandma Burgess loved you all very much. Emma, Ethan, and Jackie. Colson and Keen, Paisley and London, Grandma Burgess loved you with her whole heart. She loved her family and found great pleasure in being with each and every one of us whenever she could. She loved us and we loved her. But mostly, Grandma Burgess loves Jesus. And she always showed it. So five weeks after we were here the first time, 
I emphasized a few things that I can <coughs> say to you together again um, via mom's impact and, and influence on us. For all of us here today, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. The author of Hebrews says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of our faith. Jesus says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, not on earth. I was reading in Colossians in Colossians 1 and 2. Seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. In a nutshell, <clears throat> what do we do next? I, we focus on the eternal, as our mother did. Not so much on the temporal, but even in focusing on the temporal, even on focusing on the temporal, we still look at it in the light of eternity, per our mother's example. Because it seems to me, 95 years in the light of eternity, it's not a whole, whole lot. Mom fought the fight. She finished the course and she kept the faith. And now at last, Mom see Jesus, sees Jesus face to face and she hears the well done of heaven. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So not so coincidentally, a couple days before mom, I don't believe in coincidence, a couple days before mom passed, I was reading in Joshua chapter 3 and on into chapter 4 where it talks about um, the people crossing over the Jordan River. And I thought of mom. The story again in a nutshell, um, the best I can tell it. In preparation for the crossing, the people consecrated themselves. They readied themselves for the crossing. Mom was ready to cross over. Then the people proceed to the water's edge and they got a problem. How in the world do we cross over? How do we get to the other side? Well, what does God do? He parts the waters and provides a way to get to the other side. God provides the way. And then they joyously cross over as the people are focused on the ark of God's presence all the way. So mom was ready. God provided a way for her and for us. And mom joyously crossed over uh, into the very presence of God. This Memorial Weekend and at this memorial service. And you know what happened in the rest of the story, or some of the story, is the people set memorial stones in, in the Jordan and on the other side in remembrance of God's provision for getting them to the other side. And last Saturday, Mom crossed over to the other side. And in the final chapter, because I got through the rest of the book of Joshua in, in chapter 24, which is the, the final chapter. The last words as, as Joshua gathers the people together, the last words before his death. Uh, he's encouraging the people, remain faithful, remain faithful. And he says, this is familiar to, to many of us probably. He says, choose you this day who you will serve. Now fear the Lord and serve him. And Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that was my mom. That's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. And Joshua sets up another memorial stone there, a ninth one. And he sends the people into their inheritance. The rest of the story is the people didn't remain faithful to serve the Lord. But my mom did. Faithful to serving the Lord all the way to the other side where I know she resides today, dwelling in the presence in the house of the Lord forever. <coughs> well, we'll see you there, Mom. We'll see you there, Grandma. Thank you so much, and we love you so much. So Di asked me to sing, and I'm, I'm honored to do that at Mom's service. And uh, I didn't really know what to sing outside of rest in the Lord. 
And uh, I only have one track to the record of the songs I've, I've recorded, so that narrowed it down for me. But I guess, I, again, not believing in coincidence, I think there's a reason why I only have this track. And, uh, and then Di sent me a tape, or a video, shortly before Mom passed, when you walked in the room, they were playing music, and this was the song they were playing. And the song really speaks about how you and I, all of us can walk in God's presence. We can, we can uh, be in God's presence, we can practice His presence throughout the day. And that's what it's really about. I mean, it's a total, it's a song written by my brother, our brother. But I, as I sing it, I can't help but think that mom, mom is actually in God's presence today. And that's certainly worth celebrating. So we'll do this one, Sam. Thank you. Yeah. 
chapel here today where we find comfort and we find rest and we find peace in your presence always with us I certainly thank you for the life of Billy Burgess for the impact which in a short time we can't possibly communicate or even know for the influence but I thank you Lord for her life and I thank you that all is well today in your presence. And I know this in my heart, Lord. I believe it with all my heart. One day we too will see you face to face. I pray that all of us will be ready to cross over ourselves into your very presence. I pray for, oh, every family has issues walking through things um, such as this. I pray for peace, comfort, for a real knowledge of your presence, a real understanding of your presence in our lives during these days as, as we move forward. I pray that to you, even where healing is necessary, God, that that would take place and that you would uh, strengthen us, sustain us in the days ahead. As you always have we rely on you God you are indeed as mom told us you're our only hope but we place our hope in you our confidence in you and I thank you for your, the fact that our hope is in you and one day we'll see mom again and dwell in the house of the Lord forever I pray all this in the precious name of love every name in the name of Jesus amen, amen. God bless you all thank you so much for being here today you're dismissed. Like, well. <laughs>